love. The power of connection in that relationship with the Lord does those things that begins to change us, begins to transform us. This streaming power of connection, this, this, this never-ending love that God has for us in spite of our sin, this love that continues to stream in to our lives. And we all know what streaming is, right? That's not something foreign to us. And um, we'll, we'll be at home and uh, you'll find a new show that you want to stream. And um, before you know it, you're, you're, you're found really enjoying that show. And you fall into the binge watching time where you're three, four shows deep as you're streaming into this uh, episode or whatever it is you're watching, then all of a sudden in the midst of your streaming, we've all experienced this, a little spinny wheel comes on the TV and it begins to freeze. And we're like, oh no, what am I going to do? It's actually known as the wheel of death. The spinning wheel of death. And panic starts. What do I do? Particularly the first time that that happened. Immediately, it's 11 o'clock at night, we're on the phone with Verizon. Send someone now. I need to see the next episode of what I'm watching. Well, that spinny wheel of death is telling us you are no longer connected. What it's saying is you're no longer streaming. You've now become disconnected. That's why you can't watch what you need to watch. Apart, the spinning wheel of death, apart from that sustenance, it, matter of fact, it goes on and says, just cut the branches off and throw them to a fire because that's all they're good for. What? Because connection is something that we need to understand. And your neighbor sitting next to you and those around us are branches. And we're connected together. And there's going to be an eternity with all these branches that we're connected to. So you better start getting along now. As we're coming together, we need to understand that. And to overcome our trials and our temptations, we discover that, that when, when those oppositions come, what James is teaching is that we've got to remain in this faith. And we'll, we'll come to a trial, we'll come to these temptations. And what does he say? This connection, we've got to have faith. We've got to have family. We've got to have friends. That's what gives us the victory over those things. James reminds us that we have to fulfill the royal law, which is to love your neighbor as yourself, whether you like him or not. That we have to have this connection. That we're called to show this unconditional love that we've received to people in our lives. That we've... You know, when all I care about is myself and my own well-being, it seems to get worse, not better. But something happens when I have that love for people around me. And our faith has to have that outward expression. That's what this is all about. That outward expression, James calls it works. That, that inward faith that we have has to have this expression of works. Now, our works are the demonstration of what we believe, the demonstration of our faith. It's not a means to salvation. In other words, if I just do all these good deeds that I'm supposed to do, then I'll get to heaven. That's not true. We come by grace through faith into a relationship with Jesus, who's our Savior. And when we come to that place and we have that faith, the response of what we believe is an outward expression. It means that, that i got to respond to what I've encountered. There needs to be evidence. He's the vine. We're the branches. What's the purpose of the branch? It's to produce something, an outward fruit, an outward sign in our lives. It should be that evidence. But all too often, from that connection, we short-circuit ourselves, and we become disengaged from living out our faith even for those who've made that decision. And it's no wonder because in today's fast-paced world, it's really easy to become overwhelmed and disconnected. We've never been more informed as a society and disconnected relationally. James says, look, hearing should always lead to doing. Hearing should always lead to a response, an outward Response, And we believe that because if we've raised children, we've all said this at one point. 
listen to me. And they go, what? Listen, read my lips. You're not hearing me. So maybe we yell a little louder because we know that works, right? Listen to me. And what's happening? There's, there's a disconnect. But what do we believe as a parent? We believe what we say they're actually going to do. Yeah, you got to listen first. But we believe, why? Because we believe these little cherubs that God entrusted us with, that we had no idea what we were doing when we were given them. It's all lies. It's just like, ah, I don't know what to do with this. And then they get older and you go, I don't know what to do with this. And they get older and I don't know what to do with this. But we believe God who's entrusted us with these gifts of life We believe that they'll have the best if they listen. That morally, they'll understand that we can give them guidance and direction. Not because we're so smart and we nailed it, because we made so many mistakes and we don't want them to make it. It's in his truth that now gives us a direction for our life. And when we get hold of that, when we truly believe that, what James is saying is what faith you have will result in doing. What you're hearing in your life will result in doing what you heard. And I believe the way that we truly hear it is when we begin to live it, when we begin to trust the Lord that in the things that we've heard and received that he's called us to participate in. There's so much we're missing because we're not listening. I think what we need to do is strive. Strive to be a people, as James said, quick to listen, slow to speak, and then eager to do what God says. Amen?